Today, we will discuss the most complicated genealogy ever, the Kashyap's one. If you have watched these videos, then you would have noticed that some portions of the Kashyap's family have already been discussed there partially. But here, in this video, we will showcase it in a more structured and comprehensive way. Before we start, I think everyone is familiar with this part. Marichi and Daksha were the mind-born sons of God Brahma. Sage Marichi's son Kashyap married many daughters of Daksha. If you read all the Puranas, then we will see that different Puranas have different accounts of Kashyap's wives and children. Many of them are similar and many are different. If you are going to discuss all those, then the video would be more complicated and very hard to follow. So here, we will keep our focus mainly on Vishnu Purana. And with this, we will try to give some other Puranas references wherever required. Also in places, we will take reference from Mahabharat. Rishi Kashyap is a Saptarshi in the current Manvantara, that is Vaivashrata Manvantara. One of the significant contributions of Kashyap is his role as the progenitor of numerous illustrious lineages. Due to this, he is regarded as a Prajapati. Some of the Vedic hymns are attributed to him. According to Mahabharat, Kashyap married 13 daughters of Daksha. Aditi, Diti, Danu, Kala, Danayu, Singhika, Krodha, Pradha, Vishwa, Binata, Kapila, Kadru and Muni. Vishnu Puran agrees with the number 13, but the list given is slightly different. Aditi, Diti, Danu, Arishta, Surasa, Surabhi, Krodhavasha, Tamra, Irak, Binata, Khasa, Kadru and Muni. To know more about Daksha's daughters, you can check out our video on Daksha daughters. The link is in the description. As we said earlier, we will focus mainly on Vishnu Puran. So these are the 13 daughters of Daksha, with whom Kashyap married. From other Puranas, we found a few extra names. Like Bhagavad Puran has Sarama, Kashtha, Patangi, Yamini and Timi. Kashyap also married two daughters of Vaishwanara, Puloma and Kalika. From them had 60,000 Danavas, known as Paulamas and Kalkeyas. According to a few ancient scriptures from Aditi, Kashyap had 33 children. Among them, 12 were Adityas, 11 Rudras, 8 Vasus and 2 Ashwins. But this area is highly controversial and debatable. We need a separate video to discuss that. So let's move on. The Adityas in the Vishnu Puran are Vishnu in the form of Bhavana Avatar, Sakra that is Indra, Aryama, Dhata, Twashta, Bhaga, Vivaswan, Sabita, Mitra, Varun, Angsha and Pusha. Vivaswan is none other than Surya. To avoid more complexities, here we will show only Vivaswan's descendants. With him, Sangya gave birth to Vivaswata Manu. After him, she gave birth to two sets of twins, Yama and Yami and the Ashwins. Her youngest son was Revanta. Chaya, another wife of Surya, begot two sons named Shanishara and Savarni Manu and one daughter, Tapati, who married Sambaran. Their son was Kuru, the founder of the Kuru dynasty. Manu had ten sons, Ikshvaku, Nriga, Dhrishta, Saryati, Narishanta, Navag, Dishta, Karush, Prishadra, Prangshu. In Bhagavad Puran, Padma Puran, we find Kavi instead of Prangshu. And a daughter, Ila. Ila married Chandra's son, Buddha. From their son, Pururava, the famous Chandra Vamsha expanded. Later, Ila's gender changed to male and called Sudyumna. He had three sons. Utkal, Gaye and Vinata. As a consequence of the crime of killing a cow, Prishadra was degraded to the Shudra. Saryati, one of the sons of the Manu, had a daughter named Sukanya. She was married to the holy sage Chavan. In this chain, later Lord Parashuram was born. Saryati also had a son, Anatta. His son was Revata. Revata's son was Raivata or Kapudmin. His lovely daughter was Revati. 
Once they visited Brahmalok and spent some moments meeting Brahma. But due to time dilation on earth, ages elapsed. Later, she married Balaram, the elder brother of Lord Krishna. From Dhrishta, the son of the Manu, sprang the Kshatriya race of Dhrashtaka. From Karusha, descended the mighty warriors Karushas. The sovereigns of the north. The son of Navaga was Navaga. His descendants were Ambarish, Vidupa, Prishadashwa, Rathinara. Dishta's descendants were From Dishta's descendants, we see Trinavindu. Trinavindu's daughter was Ilavila or Ilavida, who married sage Vishrava. Kuber was their son. From Bhagavad Puran, we found Riga and Narishanta's descendants. They were Though all the Manu's children are descendants of Surya, but mainly Ikshvaku's descendants are called Surya Vanshi. Ikshvaku had many sons. Among them, Bhikukshi, Dhimi and Danda were famous. From Bhikukshi's bloodline, we find Lord Ram. For details, you can check out this video. From Nimi, we find Sir Dhwaja, also known as King Janak, who was the foster father of Sita, Lord Rama's wife. For details, you can check out this video. This is roughly the descendants of Kashyap from Aditi's side. But he had other wives too. Diti had two sons by Kashyap named Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. She also had a daughter, Singhika, the wife of Biprachitti. Later, Diti had 49 Maruts from Kashyap. Hiranyakashipu was the father of four sons, Anudlad, Hlad, Prallad and Sanglad. The sons of Sanglad were Ayushman, Shibi and Vashkal. Prallad had a son named Virochan, whose son was Bali, who had a hundred sons, of whom Banasura was the eldest. Hiranaksha also had many sons, all of whom were Daityas of great prowess. Utkur, Shakuni, Bhut Santapana, Mahanava, and the valiant Kalanava were the most famous. The popular children of Kashyap by Danu were Dvimurdha, Shankar, Ayomukh, Shankushira, Kapil, Shambar, Ekachakra, Mahabahu Tarak, Mahaval Swarvanu, Vrishaparva, Pulom, the powerful Viprachitti, and many others, including Maidanav, Vaishwanara, Hayagriva, etc. As we said earlier, Viprachitti married Simhika, the daughter of Diti. Their sons were Vangsha, Shalya, Nava, Vatapi, Namuchi, Ilval, Khasrim, Anjaka, in some versions Andhak, Narak, Kalanav, Swarvanu, Mahabir, Vaktrayodhi. These were the most eminent Danavas. Till now, whatever we have witnessed is metaphorical in many parts. But from now onwards, the metaphorical part will surface out more predominantly. It is said in the Puranas and the ancient laws of India that all living beings that we see in the world today sprang from Kashyapa's offspring by his different wives. These not only include humans, but also animals and trees. One important thing is that this creation took place in the second or the Swarochi Shamanvantar. Kashyap's wife Tamra had six illustrious daughters named Shuki, Sheni, Bhasi, Sugrivi, Shuchi, and Gridrika. Suki gave birth to parrots, owl, and crows. Sheni to hawks. Bhasi to kites. Gridrika to vultures. Suchi to waterfowl. Sugrivi to horses, camels, and asses. Vinata bore to Kashyap two celebrated sons, Garu and Aruna. Garur, also called Suparna, was the remorseless enemy of the serpent race. 
from Padmapuran, we found Arun's children were Sampati and Jatayu. Sampati's children were Babru and Shigraga. Jatayu's children were Karnikar and Shatagami. The children of Surasa were a thousand mighty many-headed serpents traversing the sky. Which is similar to modern day fables, dragon. The progeny of Kadru was a thousand powerful many-headed serpents of immeasurable might. The chief amongst whom were Shesha, Vasuki, Taksh or Takshak, Sankh, Swet, Mahapadma, Kambal, Ashwatar, Ilapatra, Nag, Karkotak, Dhananjay, and many other fierce and venomous serpents. The family of Krodhavasha were all sharp toothed monsters, whether on the earth, amongst the birds, or in the waters that were devourers of flesh. In one word, we can call them as carnivorous. Surabhi was the mother of cows and buffaloes. Ira of trees and creeping plants and shrubs and every kind of grass. Khasa of the Rakshasas and Yakshas. Muni is the mother of the Apsaras. And Arishta is the mother of the illustrious Gandharvas. From Bhagavad Puran, we have some interesting data. From Timi were born aquatic beings. From Saroma ferocious animals like tigers, dogs and others. Which is similar to Krodhavasha from Vishnu Puran. From Surabhi were cows, buffaloes and animals with cloven hooves. Rashtha gave birth to animals with uncloven feet. That is whose hooves are not split. Yamini gave birth to locusts. After listening to this, you all may be wondering, it is impossible. How can a human rishi produce not only all animals, but also all the trees? This may look quite unbelievable to you, isn't it? To know more about this, you have to see our next video. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next topic. Till then, take care.